and welcome to Grandad's Reviews. In this video we're going to have a look at one of my favourite alternative lenses for the Fuji system. The Canon 10-18mm EFS mount lens. Now this might not be the sharpest lens, it's certainly not the fastest lens, but it is a good all-rounder and a cheaper alternative to the Fuji 10 to 24. You can pick these up second hand around about the 150 pound mark, brand new they're only 250 and I pair that up with the Fringer Pro 2 adapter. Now these are just over 300 pound new but you can pick these up for a couple hundred pound off eBay. So if you found one of these on eBay for 150 and this say so up 350 pound and you've got a 10 to 18 mil. As I say not the fastest 4.5 to 5.6 but still for what I need it for and what I use it for it's perfect. If you were to get uh, a Fuji 10-24, to there's two versions now, version 1 and 2. Latest price is brand new, you're looking £899. Used, you're looking around about the 5 to 5.50 mark. So, a good saving. Okay, it's not F4, but it ought to do the job. But you might notice something slightly different with this one. Because I noticed on YouTube that there's a mod you can do to change the plastic EFS mount to a metal EF mount. Now not only does it give you a more durable mount than this plastic one, it also allows you to fit this to the Viltrox EF FX2 speed booster because this has got glass elements in it with the original mount it could hit the glass so this won't accept EFS mount but it will accept EF mount so and it fits and now instead of it being a 15 to 24 roughly it's now basically a 10 to 18, so we get a wider shot. But does it work? So we'll look at the results and we'll see if there's any benefits and does it make any difference. But there is a big downside. If you go to the Fringer website, you'll see that this lens is compatible with this adapter and the autofocus works nearly as good as a native Fuji lens. Go to the Viltrox website and obviously this isn't made with the EFS mount, so it's not on their cap compatibility list. And the AF does not work at all. So you end up using it as a manual focus lens only. So that's the biggest downside. But let's have a look at the results of the tests and uh, see what you think. Right, so having looked at the results, what's the conclusion about doing the EFS2 EF mod on the 10 to 18? And is it worth it? Now, the actual plate itself costs around about £30 off uh, eBay. And yes, is it worth it or not? Yes, you do get a better mount, and you can now fit this to. EF mount cameras that won't accept EFS but you do get vignetting if you put it on a full frame you'll get the same or roughly the same vignetting that we just saw on my Fuji with the speed booster so it also means you can fit this to a speed booster onto different cameras so if you put it on micro four thirds you'll find probably find that that will cover but near enough cover the whole center at 10 mil with the speed booster but as you can see on the APS-C, 
you got to get to around about 12 mil before you actually cover the sensor with a speed booster. But it does give you a wider view. I mean, 18 mil, it's still considerably wide. So it is useful. You get a better mount, more reliable, stronger mount, so it's not plastic anymore. And yeah, I, I think it's worth it. I'm definitely going to use it more with the speed booster. Get that little bit extra wide, especially if uh, I'm vlogging or something. Obviously, you can't use the autofocus, but you can easily manual focus it. Now and again, the autofocus will work, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty hit and miss. And that's really only because the speed booster doesn't really accept AFS, EFS lenses. So at the end of the day, your choice, but I think, yeah, I think it's a, gives a little bit extra to that lens and makes it a little bit more useful, especially on my Fujis. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and help the channel. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, see you later.